In addition to using a slope generator as a sub-octave divider, you can also use it to be a wave shaper. So I'm going to take the sawtooth output from my Mother 32's oscillator and go into the input, not the trigger input, but the input, because I want to take the existing wave and bend it with my rise and fall rates here. Go to my input there. To go ahead and have your wave shaping track your oscillator as you play up and down the keyboard, you also want to take a copy of your keyboard voltage and run that into the one volt per octave. Otherwise, as you play notes, some of them are going to start shifting in octaves, depending on how the rise and fall times interact with the duration of your cycle. And that's also a cool effect, but we're going to focus on wave shaping for now. Okay, finally, let's go ahead and take the output. Don't need to take the bipolar output in this case, because this is already taking the existing bipolar signal from the oscillator, then adding slopes to it. I'm just double checking that I'm starting with linear shaping to begin with, and then we can have some more fun using the feedback loops. So take my output, I'll go into the magenta just so you can see it. it's on this side. I'm going to go ahead and resync my data to look at channel three, the magenta side. So we can go ahead and get a nice stable display out of this. There we go. So here is the normal sawtooth wave out of my Mother 32. I'll drone it, open up the cutoff, and then let's turn over to the external input, which is my modified waveform. Right now it's just creating an attenuated waveform, but we can play around with these slopes. And mellow it out to be more of a triangle wave. Almost a thin pulse type sound there. Or we can engage the exponential controls and start bending the wave shape a bit more. Some different harmonics in there compared to original, something with a little bit more of a hollowed out sound. I'm very gentle to begin with there. Mix them together or just use my modified waveform and it tracks the keyboard. Because again, we're using the sawtooth wave from this normal oscillator to go ahead and shape. So we're just bending something rather than creating something from scratch and we're tracking the keyboard. Now some interesting things happen if you don't use the one pole per octave input. Go ahead and pull that out for now. So start playing different notes. Start reducing the amplitude because these can't rise and fall fast enough. As I go down, down an octave. timbre changes if anyone note I'm playing. What's even more fun is since these are voltage controlled, I can go ahead and decide how much slope I'm applying based on an incoming voltage. In other words, I can envelope this. So let's go ahead and grab my envelope generator that I had going to my filter and instead run it to the voltage controlled input. Now the amount of rise and fall time is being changed with my envelope. You almost get a filter-like effect where I go from a sawtooth wave to something that's more like a triangle, or with more of a bend to it. Take these exponential out for now, and play around with the rise and fall time. Go with a slower fall time, it's like a high-pass filter, as opposed to a low-pass filter when I have a very fast fall time. And again, I can go ahead and run these in different directions. It's sort of that reverse envelope again of like a high-pass filter. And let's go ahead and bend it a little bit.
mix in the original. Maybe in square wave. So it can generate waveforms, it can bend waveforms, have them track the keyboard, or have them track an envelope. As I said before, this is your secret weapon when it comes to a three module challenge, because you have these two sections and each one can be doing different things.